Hello and welcome back to this series of lectures on elements of solar energy conversion. We are here at lecture number 21. So far we have started looking at the flat plate solar collector and the major version of it we have completed which is the liquid flat plate collector and we have started in the last class the air heaters okay, which are significantly different in the design because it requires larger area of contact between the heat conducting fluid and the heated surface okay. and the design also requires involvement of a bottom plate other than the absorber plate we need a bottom plate and that is why the design also becomes or the analysis also becomes little bit different. That is what we have started looking at in the last class and we will continue looking at it today as well. So, this is the figure we drew in the last class where we have seen that we have a cover and then we have the absorber plate here and we have the absorber plate and then we have the bottom plate here okay. and the lower portion is insulated and we have seen that the heat conducting the resistance circuit, the thermal resistance circuit is little bit different in this case. So, let us start analyzing it by doing the heat balance. Now, heat balance we have to do individually for the plate, for the bottom plate and the fluid. Okay. So, first we will look at the heat balance for absorber plate. So, the amount of radiation that it will receive in a small strip of d x length. Okay. This is the length d x. So, this is the absorber plate we are looking at and in the perpendicular direction to the board we have dimension L 2. So, that is why the total amount of radiation that you will receive is S L 2 d x and what will be the losses? First one will be the loss towards the top that means, u t l 2 d x multiplied by the delta t which is t p m or the absorber plate mean temperature minus the ambient temperature plus the term will have the absorber plate will lose heat to the flow fluid or air which is flowing at the bottom and we have seen that the heat transfer coefficient we have designated is with H F P, F stands for the fluid and P stands for the plate and the area remains the same and you have to multiply it with the temperature difference between the plate and the fluid. Okay. Now, another term we have here is the radiative heat transfer between the absorber plate and the bottom plate. What is that? That L 2 into d x that area term is common to all the different heat transfer terms and we have 2 emissivity terms epsilon p and epsilon b for the plate and the bottom plate and it will be multiplied by the fourth power of the difference in fourth power of temperatures. 
between the absorber plate and the bottom plate right. So, this is basically the heat balance for the absorber plate. Now, similarly we can do that for the bottom plate. Okay. So, for bottom plate what are the different terms? One will be the radiative heat that is coming from the absorber plate to the bottom plate and that is lost one to the fluid and other through the bottom portion or through U B. Right. So, what heat gain it is doing from the absorber plate? The same thing that we wrote for the absorber plate, but this will be gain to the bottom plate, not the loss to the absorber plate, but we are writing it as gain to the bottom plate. Okay. So, this gain has to be equated to summation of two loss terms. One is the heat that is being lost to the fluid. So, H into area into delta T that is temperature mean temperature of the bottom plate minus the fluid temperature. And we also have the bottom loss coefficient which is taking heat from the bottom plate to the ambient. So, this will be the term. Okay. So, that gives us the heat balance for the bottom plate. Now, similarly we can do that for the air stream, okay, which is the heat carrying fluid in this particular case. Okay, so, here what we can write? We can do the control volume analysis and we can write the amount of mass flow rate multiplied by the specific heat and that multiplied by the delta in temperature of the fluid in d x length. And this amount of storage that is happening inside the fluid is from where those heat that heat is coming one is from the top plate the other one is from the bottom plate right. So, there will be two terms one will be from the top plate or the absorber plate okay. this is the term this is the heat that is coming into that control volume from the absorber plate and the other term which is coming from the bottom plate in the same control volume of area L to d x, but now the temperature difference is bottom plate temperature mean bottom plate temperature minus the fluid temperature. Okay. So, we have three equations for one for absorber plate, then for the bottom plate and the fluid which is air here. Okay. So, these three equations will tell us how to go about this. Now, one first thing I want you to notice that unlike the liquid flat plate collector we did not use the overall loss coefficient or U L. Okay. Why we could not use it? Because earlier it was only the absorber plate and the fluid those were two heat carrying or uh, those were interacting between each other in terms of heat. Okay. But in this case we have this additional 
bottom plate and that is why we cannot use a single term overall heat transfer coefficient u l we cannot use because the thermal resistance circuit circuit does not allow us to combine u t and u b top and bottom loss coefficient cannot be combined it can be combined if both are connected to the same node here we have two nodes one is for the absorber plate the other one is for the bottom plate for that reason we cannot combine u t and u b ok but we can of course apply simplifications uh, to this and we will see that shortly ok now another thing that to simplify the equations that we have just written for the top or I should say absorber plate. So, we will use the equivalent heat transfer coefficient for the radiative term. Right. This we introduced in, in the liquid flat plate collector as well to combine the radiative term into the common uh, delta T form. Okay. So, what we will use? We will use this equivalent radiative heat transfer coefficient H r and it will be multiplied by the temperature difference between the absorber plate and the bottom plate and that will be equal to the heat transfer rate that is happening between the absorber plate and the bottom plate. Clear? So, this is the equivalent radiative heat transfer coefficient is not it. Okay. Now, another simplification we can do which is often true that for small values of the difference in temperature between the absorber plate and the bottom plate, okay, what we can do? We can further simplifies, simplify this. and what we can get this T p m to the power 4 minus T b m to the power 4 which you can write let me write it approximately equal to, but for small values of delta T p m b m is true that it is 4 times the average temperature cubed multiplied by T p m minus T b m. Okay. So, this is nothing but a close approximation to the overall term and here T average is nothing but the mean of these two temperatures okay. T p m plus T b m divided by 2 and this is approximately equal to which is very closely accurate if you have small T p m minus T b m value. Okay. So, if we substitute that then this equivalent radiative heat transfer coefficient takes the following form. Right? It is much more compact compared to the earlier one and let me write for small value of T 
TPM minus TBM. Okay, so, this is the equivalent radiative heat transfer coefficient. Now, another simplification we can do. So, moreover, more often than not this u t is much much greater than u b. What does it mean? It means that the top loss coefficient is dominating in the overall loss coefficient. Okay, the bottom loss, the bottom part what we have here? Yeah, in the bottom part we have this total insulation right this is insulation and the loss through that part is really small compared to what is happening towards the top towards the top we have the cover and the top loss uh, top plate which is heated so and we cannot uh, um, like do away with the cover okay we have to have it and that is where the radiative and convection heat loss are also happening. So, we cannot do away with it and that is why we are stuck with U t, but U b is our hand. It is the thickness of insulation we can increase and often it is negligibly small. So, often U b is completely neglected. that means u b is 0 that is what it is assumed. Then one thing we can do that we only have u t now and what we can do we can replace that with u l. u l stands for the loss coefficient and it is acceptable when you do not have any u b. So, in absence of u b we can we can replug the symbol u l it is convenient because it tells you about the loss it reminds you of the loss so what it means that we will use u l equal to u t okay so if that is the case what we can write now, with all these simplifications, if we revisit the equations that we have written for the absorber plate, okay, we can have the simple equation which is A s equal to U L T P M minus T A plus H F P T P M minus T F plus H R T P M minus T B M. Okay. So, three terms, four terms actually, S is the absorbed radiation per unit area and that absorbed radiation is being balanced under the steady state by three terms one is lost to the first term here is lost to the ambient second term here is lost to the fluid or air or third term here is lost to the bottom plate okay and for the bottom plate the heat balance equation takes even more simpler term because it has only two relevant terms one is the radiative heat transfer between the absorber plate and the bottom plate that will be equal to whatever heat is being lost to the fluid from the bottom plate. Minus T f right and for the fluid also we need to relook at the balance equation here we can see that this whole thing we cannot get rid of this L 2 and D x. This area 
stays there sorry uh, yeah l 2 into let us write it in this form okay. and this particular heat gain for that control volume for the air we heat gain is happening due to two terms one is from the top plate to the fluid and the other term is from the bottom plate to the fluid is not it. So, you go back and look at the original equations that we have written and after you apply the simplification whether you get these three simplified equations. So, I insist that you go back and do it for yourself that will clarify the uh, the concepts. Okay. Now, if we do use this bottom plate heat balance equation, we can do we can just find this T B M in terms of the other terms H R T P M plus H F B T F divided by H R plus H F B right. We have done nothing. So, there are two T B M's here. So, we have clubbed them together and expressed T B M in terms of the other terms that is what we did. Okay. Now, we can substitute this T B M expression in the absorber plate equation. right? So, if we do that by substituting T B M in the heat balance equation of the absorber plate. what we can write? We can now have a much simpler expression for the mean absorber plate temperature. Okay. What is that? It is U L T A plus H E T F. What H E I will just tell you now, but let me write it first. Okay. So, okay. so maybe my handwriting is not that clear this is L okay, and this one is E. Okay. So, so, you can do this algebra, but we need to specify what we mean by H E. Okay. So, here H E is the effective heat transfer coefficient between the absorber plate and the air stream. Okay. And if you do the algebra, what we will get? this H E is nothing but the original H F P which is the direct convection heat transfer coefficient from the plate to the fluid stream plus the combination of the radiative heat transfer from the absorber plate to the bottom plate and the and the effective convection coefficient from the bottom plate to the stream. So, that combination gives us this. Okay. So, this is the effective heat transfer coefficient between the absorber plate and the air stream. Okay. Now, what you can write for the T P M minus T A, T P M expression we have already written here, right? this is the expression for T P M. Now, if you subtract T P M minus T A, then S plus H 
E T F minus T A divided by U L plus H E. Okay. So, you can do the algebra and you can find this. This is simply we have just subtracted the ambient temperature. Now, what we can do from the subtraction of heat balance for the air stream from the heat balance of the absorber plate with all these different manipulations that we have done. What we get? We get the following M C P divided by L 2 D T F D X equal to S minus U L T P M minus T A. This looks familiar, right? Because this is the exactly the same equation we have obtained for the liquid flat plate collector. And when we substitute this T P M minus T A here, what we get? One plus U L divided by H E S minus U L T F minus T A. Okay. So let me write it explicitly that this equation is similar to what we obtained for liquid flat plate collector and we have the equivalent term for the collector efficiency factor which we designated as F prime here that F prime is 1 over U L by H E reciprocal of that 1 upon 1 plus U L by H E. Okay. If you substitute that it is thus exactly the same equation we obtained. Okay. So, here we get back the sim similar equation because not exactly same because we, we did not introduce the uh, area of the collector yet. So, that is why there are some external dissimilarities, but mathematically they look exactly the same. Okay. So, this is the governing equation for the heat gain of the air stream in the air heater. Okay. So, we will, if we have the similar equation, the solution will also be similar, right? There is no question of any dissimilarity. So, what we can write we without doing anything just by following the solution of the liquid flat plate collector we can straight away write it in this form. So, T F i is the inlet temperature of the air and we can write 
minus L 2 f prime u L x m dot C p. Right. Just by following what we obtain for liquid flat plate collector, we can write the same equation here, where this particular quantity we have introduced which is the inlet temperature of the air stream. Okay. So, now from this solution when we have x equal to L 1, L 1 means the length right. Let me see this again. Yeah. So, this was our L 1, L 1 means the length along the flow direction. Okay. So, x equal to L 1 that means at the end of the air channel that means at the outlet. Okay. So, we will have T f will be T f naught right that will be the outlet fluid temperature okay. and this L 2 into x this will be equal to L 2 into L 1 and what is L 2 into L 1? L 1 is the along the flow that is the length and L 2 is the across the flow that is the length. So, L 2 into L 1 will be the total area of the collector right A C. So, what we can write that S divided by U L plus T A minus T F naught because we have put x equal to L 1 okay. that is why the temperature will be the outlet temperature S over U L plus T A minus T F i. Okay. This will be equal to exponential okay, minus of A C F prime U L divided by m dot C p. Right? Here nothing has changed, we have uh, put L 2 into x to be equal to A c and here we have put T f naught. So, this is the final equation which is obtained by the thermal analysis of the air heater. Okay. So, similar way as the liquid flat plate collector what we can write the rate of useful heat gain by the air stream will be F R A C multiplied by S minus U L T F I minus T A. So, here you note that I am not going through all the derivations again you can just draw parallel between the air heater and the liquid flat plate collector and that is how you can directly write these equations the uh, solution of the differential equations and then all the subsequent ones you can directly write when you saw uh, see this parallel between these two. Okay. So, again we have written this equation directly and here the F R which is nothing but the collector heat removal factor that is M dot C P U L A C 1 minus exponential minus F prime U L into A C divided by m dot c p. Okay. Just drawing the parallel between the air heater and the conventional liquid flat plate collector you can write all these things. Okay. 
So, here one thing we have to note that we have assumed the heat transfer coefficients between the air stream and the plates are known right f uh, h f p or h f b all these things are known that we have assumed, but how to know that right. So, a note on the heat transfer coefficients. Okay. So, to be able to evaluate F R as per the above formulation, one needs to have the heat transfer coefficients. Right. And this case actually corresponds to a known case from the con convective heat transfer coefficient or convective heat transfer uh, theory that this case corresponds to to the situation of a turbulent flow between long parallel plates okay, where one plate is heated and the other one is insulated. Right. So, in this case our absorber plate is being heated by the solar radiation and the bottom plate is insulated right. and for such case we have two correlations. You know from the convective heat transfer these correlations are obtained by dimensional analysis and then fitting large number of experimental data point to obtain certain equations and those are called correlations that are used to find out the heat transfer properties under a particular flow situation. Okay. So, one uh, two correlations exist and either of them can be used. Okay. Both gives you within 10 percent accuracy for the Reynolds number range of uh, Reynolds number range of 10,000 to 20,000. So, that is the typical range that you will find for these air heaters and it serves quite accurately you will get the age. Okay. So, what are the correlations? One is this Nussel number is equal to 0 0.158 Reynolds number to the power 0 0.8. Okay. So, these are the non dimensional numbers you know them I am not going into detail of that I am just providing the correlation so that you can use them while you solve the numerical problems. So, this is 0 1 3 4 4 Reynolds number to the power 0 0.75 divided by 1 minus 1.586 Reynolds number to the power minus 1 point sorry minus 0 0.125. Okay. And for evaluating the Reynolds number, you know that you have to use the 
equivalent diameter right so for evaluating the reynolds number you find the equivalent diameter of the channel uh, area cross section so de is 4 times the cross sectional area divided by the weighted perimeter right this you know so you have to evaluate that for the air channel where the flow is happening and then use that equivalent diameter in evaluating the Reynolds number and then you can use the correlation to get the Nusselt number. From the Nusselt number you will have to get the H by using the uh, thermal diffusivity. Okay. And another important aspect of the is this thing is you need to know the pressure drop. Right. So, you are flowing air through a channel and that is why a pressure drop will happen which will tell you how much power your compressor or blower will consume. Okay. So, so, this pressure drop is given through the friction factor and this friction factor F is 0 0.7079 Reynolds number to the power 0. Point minus 0. 0.25. Okay, and this you require to obtain the pumping power. Okay, so, once you have identified the equivalent diameter from there you get the Reynolds number, it will give you two quantities. One is the pressure drop friction factor okay, and you will also get the heat transfer coefficient which will give you the collector heat removal factor okay, through different uh, other inputs you have to put and that is how you get how much useful heat that air heater will give you. Okay. So, that is the whole analysis we have done for a conventional air heater. Okay. Now, we are going to look at one other very common variation of this air heater. Okay where to increase the heat transfer area what we do we use fins to increase the area we use fins and those are continuous longitudinal fins. Okay, so, this is kind of a variation, but very common variation of the air heater geometry. Okay. So, what do we mean by this continuous longitudinal fins? You can think of this uh, absorber plate. Okay. Now, instead of a flat plate, we are having few fins which are protruded into the air stream of equal length and at equal distance. Okay. So, this way it is uh, going on, okay. this direction also it is continuously going on okay. and we have the bottom plate here. So, let us say this is the bottom plate and the lower portion of that is insulated. Okay. So, this is the bottom plate and these are the fins. Okay fins and this is the absorber plate. 
Now, you need to visualize how air is flowing, air is not flowing. So, the drawing that I am showing right now is not similar to the earlier air heater drawing that I have shown you, it is in the perpendicular direction. Because if air flows from this direction, then there will be huge amount of pressure drop, air channels are very small. Okay. So, air is flowing here in this direction perpendicular to the plane of the board. So, this is the air stream that are going. Okay. So, this particular symbol means going into the plane of the board. Okay. That is how air stream is going. And of course, we have a cover which is topping the absorber plate. So, this is the cover. Now, if we put some uh, dimensions here, let us say that the in between these two plates we have mid plane length which is L okay. and the length of so not here let me see it is the bottom of this plate and this is the length okay length between the top and bottom plate and the length of the fin is lf okay and here from mid plane to mid plane the distance between two consecutive fins is w okay and each fin has dimension of delta f okay now we have few different surfaces for which the heat transfer coefficient is important one is this particular surface let me use another color this particular surface let us say heat transfer coefficient is HFP and from this surface it is HFB as we have used in earlier case also. Now, we have another vertical surface which is giving us heat transfer coefficient HFF. Now, second F is for fin, okay, fluid and fin. And then the usual stuff is there, here you have the top loss coefficient and from the uh, from the bottom plate you have the bottom loss coefficient which we again assume 0. Okay. Now, the other dimension that we have that this is now perpendicular to the flow direction. So, let us say this dimension is L 2. This is again the same convention we are using as we did for the conventional air heater without fin. Okay. So, this L 2 is length perpendicular to the flow direction. Okay. And uh, along the flow direction let us say length is L 1. So, this symbol is again giving you the along the length direction uh, flow direction L 1 is the length along the flow direction. Okay. So, now we do not have to now we will do the analysis, but we do not have to go through each individual step it is very similar. So, I will go little bit quickly. So, the heat balance first for the absorber plate which is S w d x is equal to u t multiplied by w d x t p m minus t a plus h f p w d x t p m minus t f plus 
to L f these are from the fins L f d x and phi f phi f what it is we will soon tell and that part coming from the fin and then the radiative part okay. only this term is extra compared to the earlier term. Now, what is this phi f? It is nothing but the fin efficiency. Again you know this from the conductive heat transfer coefficient what is fin effectiveness? You have derived it in this course as well which is tan a hyperbolic tangent of m l f divided by m l f where m is 2 h f f that means, the heat transfer coefficient between fin and fluid and divided by conductivity of fluid and the fin thickness to the power half. Okay. Similarly, if you do the bottom plate heat balance, okay, it will be H R W D X T P M minus T B M equal to H F B W D X T B M minus T F. It is the simplest of all three heat balances because it has only two terms. One is to the fluid, the other one is radiative transfer from the upper plate. Okay. Now, for the fluid stream, for the fluid stream, now you can see that we have few channels. Okay. So, for those the number of channels we have to incorporate in terms of the total mass flow rate. So, what we will do? The total mass flow rate uh, basically if it is m dot that will be divided by the number of channels okay, that is L 2 by W multiplied by C p d t f equal to h f p w d x t p m minus t f plus 2 L f d x phi f h f f t p m minus t f plus h f b w d x t b m minus t f. Okay. So, this derivation you have to do by yourself and if you are stuck anywhere you can look at this video back again, but the way I am writing it, it will be difficult for you to follow. So, I insist that you do it on your uh, notebook the same steps. So, now the absorber plate and bottom plate, these two heat balances if you put together what you get s equal to u l t p m minus t a plus h f p 1 plus 2 l f phi f h f f divided by w h f p okay. and this whole thing multiplied by t p m minus t f and another term will be there which is between the bottom plate ok. Now, if you do the air stream part you can write m c p divided by l 2 d t f d x equal to h f p 1 plus 2 l f phi f h f f divided by w h f p 
multiplied by T p m minus T f plus H f b T b m minus T f. Okay. So, just note that only difference between fin and without fin, these two geometries only difference is this thing H f p is now modified to this term. Okay. instead of of HFP. Without fin what you had? You had only this HFP. Now, this for fin case you have modified this HFP by this. Okay. So, so the solution will be same but with modified H and the effective heat transfer coefficient H e that will also be modified in the following manner. Okay. So, these are two major modifications that the geometry of fin is introducing in the analysis, rest of the thing are exactly the same. So, here we in this lecture we have looked at the thermal analysis of air heaters both the conventional version as well as the longitudinal fin version. Okay. So, thank you very much for your attention.